excellent job, Mike, and, and not leave. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a special edition of Thrumman Time Live. I'm your host, Commander Kurt, and tonight I have with me a very special guest, Mr. Uh, Fred Farley, who is a hydroplane historian. And uh, over the last few years, actually the last almost 30 years, a little over 30 years, uh, Fred Farley has been writing uh, for the uh, uh, UHRA, which used to be the URC, Unlimited Racing Commission, and so he's our special guest tonight on the history of hydroplanes. Fred, welcome to uh, Strum and Time Live. Glad to be here, Kurt. Uh, glad you could make it. Uh, so tell me about yourself, Fred. How did you get involved in, in doing hydroplanes and writing about hydroplanes? Well, I started as a fan, uh, as a small child in Seattle here in 1951, seven years old. I watched the 1951 Gold Cup on live television, watched Lou Fadgel in the Slow Motion 5 win the race, and about 40 years later got to go for a ride in that very same Slow Motion 5. And I joined the Seattle Seafair Race Committee in the early 1960s and joined the Unlimited Racing Commission staff in the 1970s as their historian. I'm still at it 25 years later. How did you get uh, involved in, in becoming, actually becoming a hydroplane historian? How did you get all that knowledge in your head just collected it or what? Just by going to a lot of races and reading everything I could get my hands on, talking to people, owners, drivers, past participants. It's now, a fascinating sport. Now you travel the race circuit itself and, and you, you write articles at, a, 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 no, excuse me, at each site about the history of that site? or So I travel to about 50 percent, 50 to 60 percent of the races. And this year I've been to Detroit, Michigan, Evansville, Indiana, Madison, Indiana, Tri-Cities, Washington, Kelowna, and then our race here in Seattle. Well, welcome to uh, Strum and Time Live, and uh, it's great that you're here. Uh, now, let's go ahead and, and I'll ask you one more question before we get over to our, our pictures. You brought in some very gracious pictures, very nice of you to bring those in. Uh, tell us about uh, what you did before you retired. You were, you were a teacher, is that correct? Yes, for 20 or 30 years, and I worked in, in a classroom as a high school teacher. And I always wanted to teach a class on unlimited hydroplanes, but the uh, <laughs> principal would never allow me. Oh, darn it. I would have been one of those students, because like, I'm, I'm a hydroplane historian myself. A lot of people say I am, but I don't consider myself a hydroplane historian. Nobody like Fred Farley here is, is he's the hydroplane expert. Okay, and you brought along some pictures, so let's go ahead and get right into that. And we're going to take, take a look at some pictures here of some old hydroplanes. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Fred Farr is going to tell us about these hydroplane pictures. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at those, if we may. All right. I see we've got the U7 there. Go ahead and okay. tell us about that. <clears throat> okay, the first hydroplanes look something like this, long and narrow, riding in one or more steps on the underside of the hull. The Hoosier Boy raced in the 1920s in the Madison, Indiana area, used a Liberty engine, and ran speeds of around 60 miles per hour. This particular uh, boat once set a a distance record from Cincinnati to Louisville back to, uh, to Cincinnati, a distance of approximately 260 miles in about 261 minutes, just under 60 miles per hour in so, 1924. So, uh, so those hydroplanes then uh, uh, were pretty fast in those days for that. What kind of engine did you say that that one particular? This one had one a Liberty engine in it, which is similar to the type of power plant that that Gar Wood was using in the Miss America boats at that time. Wow, that's neat. And when did hydroplanes first start, 1903? Right, uh, so there was a major race in, in, the, in Ireland in 1903, the Harmsworth Trophy, and then the American Powerboat Association Gold Cup in 1904 was the American answer to the Harmsworth Trophy, and because the original boats that competed for the Gold Cup were not hydroplanes in the sense that we think of uh -huh. them. They basically plowed through the water rather than skimmed over them. And not until around 1910 did boats start to skim over the water, such as what the, the, the Hoosier boy was able to do. Wow. Okay, let's take a look at another picture here, if we can. There it is. That's the, looks like it says the Pepsi 5, but it's, go ahead not and tell quite, us about uh, that. That's uh, the Miss Peps 5, Roman numeral 5. This was uh, in 1947. At a time when commercial sponsorship wasn't outright outlawed, but it w was frowned upon. So instead of calling it the Miss Pepsi, they called it the Miss Peps. 
And this was one of the, the first generation of three-point hydroplanes. So Miss Peps 5 won the Gold Cup race in 1947 with Danny Foster driving and was the first Gold Cup winner to use an Allison aircraft engine, which was the type it used in World War II fighter planes. So let's talk for a second about that. You said s sponsorship was outlawed. Why, why was that? Why, because why for many that? years it was considered to be a gentleman's sport, a yachtsman's sport, and then the spiraling costs of running a competitive unlimited hydroplane dictated that sponsorships were necessary and, and uh, such as they are today. Okay, um, we'll get that in a little bit of slow motion five, probably getting ahead of myself, but uh, I remember as a little kid, they used to have down in the Stan Sayers pit area, they had this like a big white crane and they would, in the pit area, would go out and that, is that how they lowered the boats down? Is that how they did that? You well, know, they had a little monorail that they would do. Uh -huh able to lower the boats in without one of the big cranes and I don't know why that was taken away a few years uh, back and now you need these huge expensive cranes to uh -huh. launch and retrieve the, the unlimiteds. Yes I, I had to have an interview with one of the crane operators down there and he told me he's been down there for about 25 years and uh, anyway back to the story <laughs> don't get let's not get sidetracked here ladies and gentlemen this is Mr. Hydroplane historian Mr. Fred Farley who writes uh, articles for the UHRA the unlimited racing Association. Let's go ahead and take a look at that next picture if we can and tell us about it. Oh, slow motion four. Ah. The boat that started it all in the Pacific Northwest. Designed and driven by Ted Jones of Seattle. Slow Mo won the Gold Cup in 1950 at Detroit and brought the race into Seattle for the first time in 1951. And that's how it all began with this boat. And this uh, slow motion four is now the property of the the, the, the local museum, which is now... It's all right to say the name of it, because they're a non-profit organization. They, okay. are, they're called what? Okay, it's uh, the Museum of History and Industry, uh, uh, Mohai, uh -huh. it owns it, uh, but uh, the four is on indefinite loan right now to the Hydroplane and Race Boat Museum, which is in South Park. Yes. On South 93rd Street, and we're if, open every you, Thursday yeah, night to all day chance, Saturday. If you get a chance to check it out, please do. It, it's, uh, it's a very nice museum. I've been there, and, and uh, I'm also associated with it. Okay, uh, you were talking about uh, the Slow Motion 5. Now, also to King Television, uh, I've got some in my, also in my archives. King Television wound up uh, uh, inventing the first telescopic uh, video, not video, but camera from lenses. A guy who was who worked as a cameraman there wound up taking all these lenses and making them all different shapes and was able to get focus in on some of those uh, boats and they invented uh, uh, hydroplane t coverage today. Like it's not like it is today, but for many years. Do you know anything about that? Oh yeah. So just in my early days and before I had a pit pass, and I would go down to the races during the week to watch the qualifying. Then I would generally watch the, the race itself uh, on Sunday on, on King 5 you know, because of their superior uh, technology, the way they could bring their, the race uh, literally right into my living room. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk more about boats. Uh, you were talking about slow motion 4, is it? Mm -hmm. Let's uh, take a look at the next picture there. Okay, Miss Thriftway, another Ted Jones creation. Uh, this was the late, great Bill Muncy's first Gold Cup winner in 1956 and 1957. It was the first boat to average 112 miles per hour in, in competition, in a heat of competition. And it was the first of three Miss Thriftways. Uh, this particular one, the first one, crashed at Madison, Indiana in 1957. The second Miss Thriftway hit the U.S. Coast Guard boat here in Seattle in 1958. <laughs> and the third Thriftway is, was re recently restored by the Hydroplan Race Boat Museum. And, uh, We've run it several times, and, and it's uh, the original designer Ted Jones says it's in better shape than it was when he first built it in 1959. Oh, it's a beautiful boat. I had the opportunity to be over there about two years ago when they ran it, uh, and um, uh, not Dan Jones, but uh, he drives a Pico American Dream. Sorry, my Mark my Evans. <laughs> Mark Evans. Thank you, thank you, Fred. Uh, he gave me an exclusive, and I was able to uh, take a look at that and see it and see it fired up. And there's just there's just nothing quite like it, ladies and gentlemen, to see a hydroplane fired up, and wow, you know, he gets excited. Uh, moving on to, is there anything else about the Miss Thriftway that we need to know about? No, it had a 
just it had a teammate called the Thriftway 2, which I do not have a photograph of it with me, but the Thriftway 2 was one of the first boats with the driver sitting ahead of the engine. Ah. A concept that was ahead of its time that didn't, didn't catch on for about another 20 years. Wow. Okay, let's take a look at the next picture if we can, please. And uh, go ahead and uh, tell us about that. There we are. Shanty One, a popular Seattle boat of the 1950s, and the 1956 Seafair Trophy race winner. Her driver, Colonel Rush Schley, was a 1997 inductee into the Unlimited Hydroplane Hall of Fame. And Colonel Schley, one of the great gentlemen ever associated with this sport. Uh -huh. and it was such a pleasure to meet him in person last month for the first time, truly. Well, I had met him as a youngster getting his autograph, but he had a million kids and came up to him in the 1950s and asked his autograph, and me being one of them. And he still looks robust, and I'll bet he could go for a drive right now and be competitive. <laughs> how, if I may ask, how old is he? He's in his 70s, oh, unbelievably. Really? Wow. Uh, you know, two of the hydroplane drivers I miss is, is Bill Muncy, who passed away um, in Acapulco. I'm not sure what the year was. I think it was 1981. 81, yes. And another guy who really told me a uh, long time ago, years ago, and used to give me a pit pass all the time, was Dean Genoweth. And... Uh, when he flipped over, I, I cried when he passed away. They, they rushed him to the hospital, and that was sad. There's been many drivers that uh, accidents have happened. What is the most exciting thing that you can remember uh, about the, we'll take the CLC Fair Hydroplane race. What's the most exciting moment you can remember? I know you got thousands and hundreds of hours of them. What was your most exciting one that you can think of off the top of your head? Well, just off the top of my head, in 1973, the classic duel between the Pan Pack and the Miss Budweiser. Mm -hmm. Mickey Rehman and the Pan Pack and Dean Chenoweth and the Miss Budweiser side by side all afternoon in the in a driving rain, the mist, and couldn't even see Mercer Island. The weather was horrible, uh, but the competition was superb. And it was right down to the finish line. Of the, the winner was in doubt, one of the great races of all time. Now, uh, Let's talk about, you, you said you had an opportunity, oh man, I could, I'd tell you there's just nothing, I'm so excited talking about hydroplanes, it's just, ladies and gentlemen, there's just nothing quite like about it. Uh, what was it like when you went out in a hydroplane and, and for that ride for the first time to actually sit there and put the equipment on and actually go out on a hydroplane? What was that like, Brad? Like nothing I'd ever experienced. It made a, a roller coaster and it seemed as bland as a little kid's merry-go-round. And uh, I had a chance to, uh, I had a choice of which uh, boat I wanted to ride in. My decision to ride in the Slow Motion 5 was instantaneous because that's the boat that got me hooked back in 1951. It was also the boat that did the uh, complete backward somersault in 1955 with Lou Fagel driving. I tried not to think about that right. as I climbed into the boat. My girlfriend Carol was with me when I t had my ride there at Chelan in 1994. I purposely didn't tell Carol about the flip, right. and she was worried enough as it was. Uh, it, 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 you can, uh, I can describe to the viewers, uh, basically uh, I was down in the pits there for four or five days in this past uh, August 10th, and I'll tell you, to see those hydroplanes just actually fire up and, and you hear the blah, 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 and the mm, mm, it gets in your blood, and you just, I tell you, it's so exciting, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my blood's boiling right now just talking about hydroplanes. Well, when it popped up on the three points and it was screaming down the back stretch there on the old Apple Cup course on Lake Chelan, we were only going about 115, but it felt like 215. Uh -huh. and when I got back to the pits, I was walking on the clouds for hours afterwards. Wow. Okay, let's take a look at our next picture there and uh, go ahead and tell us about that, if you would. Hawaii Kai 3, the Pink Lady. This is my girlfriend's favorite boat. Arguably the finest race boat of the 1950s, designed by Ted Jones and, Jack, and driven by Jack Regis. Hawaii Kai won five races in a row in the national championship and set a mile straightaway record of 187 miles per hour in 1957. The Kai then came out of retirement in 1958 to win the Gold Cup, the crown jewel of boat racing in Seattle's Lake Washington. Wow, that's the Hawaii Kai, and I've also had the uh, opportunity to, uh, uh, when they were restoring it down at the uh, Hydroplane Museum, to have an opportunity to uh, take a look at exactly how they were restoring it, and, and uh, I have some footage of that, and uh, 
in the future, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to put together a special, a hydroplane special, and uh, I'll, I'm going to have Fred Farley back because, ladies and gentlemen, we're not done yet. I'm just, <laughs> this just popped into my head. And, and uh, for the record, ladies and gentlemen, right here in public access, you're going to see, uh, we're going, I'm going to go ahead and produce a program. So anyway. I'm sorry I got off the track there. I just, <laughs> you know, it's, we're having so much fun here. Okay, the, the, is there anything else about the, uh, um, the Hawaii Kai 3 that uh, you want to tell us about? It was the first boat to win six races in a row, and it set records uh -huh. of, of speed and endurance that stood for many years. Cool. It's arguably the greatest race boat of the 1950s. Okay, the next boat is? There's my boat. That's the, ah. the Slow Motion 5, shown here as Miss Seattle. Okay. It raced from 1951 through 1966. It won two gold cups in 1951 and 1954. And Turned that famous backward somersault on Lake Washington in 1955, and it was Lou Fagel. And it, this uh, hall, too, it, it was uh, restored by the Hydroplan Race Boat Museum. And uh, a couple years ago, we had a little exhibition race on race day morning here to Seattle, and with Ken Muscatel driving remember it. Slow Motion 5 uh, won the race. Oh, excellent. Back in the winner's circle again after many years. Wow. Well, okay, let's move on to our next, uh, uh, next boat there. And that's the, you're looking at Miss Seattle. What's the next boat, uh, Fred? It's the Miss US 1. The Miss US 1, wow. It's a neat. Uh, okay, designed by Dan Arena, who only just recently passed away. It, repre it represented Detroit, Michigan from 1957 to 1963. It was driven in this picture uh, by Fred Alter, also driven by Don Wilson. What kind of engine did, did it have in that one? It uh, used a, a, a Rolls Royce uh, Merlin engine. In fact, at the end of the 1958 season, this boat borrowed the Rolls Merlin engine from the Hawaii Kai after that team had retired uh -huh. and won most of the, the races at the wow. end of the season with the, the Kai's Rolls engine in, in it. And this boat in 1962, with Roy Doobie driving, Roy was the crew chief, set the current mile straightaway record of 200.419 that, that still stands. Wow. Okay, and uh, moving on to our next boat there. Such Crust 4 of 1962, one of the biggest uh, unlimited hydroplanes uh, of all time, it's, it's around 34 feet. She carried not one but two Allison aircraft engines that couldn't quite keep up with the smaller light engine uh, boats. But she was always a colorful craft to have around. She was uh, owned by a wonderful gentleman named Jack Schaefer Sr. and his son Jack Schaefer Jr. drove boats for many, many years. So such crust for us recently restored and is occasionally displayed, in fact, is on display in Detroit these days. Oh, is, tell me, does Detroit have a, I heard rumors that they were planning to open up a museum back there. Have they done that yet? They're, they're talking about it. They have a, a facility, and, uh -huh. but the facility that, that is the best showcase of right now is out on, on Belle Isle at Detroit, at the mm -hmm. Dawson Great Lakes Museum. That's where the Miss Pepsi is retired. Wow. The Miss Pepsi wow. or the Mahogany Cigar or the Aqua <laughs> Truck, uh, driven by the late, great Chuck Thompson, who was one of my boyhood idols. High Point champion in 51 and 52. And it was the last competitive step hydroplane. It was the only unlimited to do justice to twin Allison Power, the Miss Pepsi. Cool. The next picture is the uh, Miss Madison, one of my favorites. Uh, to the world's only community-owned unlimited hydroplane, the host boat for the annual Madison Regatta. Again, and there's no finer place in the world to spend the Fourth of July weekend than Madison, Indiana. That's I right. plan to move there in a few years. That's and right. It's a great place to live. Anyway, the uh, Miss Madison, this, there have been a half a dozen boats named Miss Madison. This was a second hull, which uh, raced from 1963 to 1971. Miss Madison achieved immortality when she won the Gold Cup on home waters in Madison, Indiana in 1971 with my good friend Jim McCormick driving. Wow. Is Jim still alive today? Jim passed away a couple years ago, and it was like losing a family member. Yeah. You see, that's one thing, ladies and gentlemen, about uh, hydroplane racing that uh, is really exciting is that it's a family event, and it's something that uh, if you ever get a chance to uh, go down and see the hydroplane races, please do. Okay, the next picture coming up here is the Chrysler Crew. All right, uh, one of several attempts at automotive power in the unlimited class. And this particular boat was designed by Henry Lauterbach, who had great success uh, driving uh, and building seven-liter class hydroplanes. 
Miss Chrysler crew had used a pair of 426 cubic inch supercharged Chrysler Hemis. It w actually won the 1967 Detroit World Championship on the Detroit River with Bill Starrett Sr. driving. And so one of the uh, an oddity in, in unlimited racing is the only boat in the modern era to win a, a race with automotive power. Wow. So tell us about the seven liter engine. That, when you say seven liter, that's that's the That's about size? 426 cubic inch piston displacement size, yes. Wow. And uh, like you said also too, most of the boats back up until I think it was about 1981 or 82, actually up until about 85 is when the turbines start coming. We'll get into that if we have enough time here in just a second. Uh, our last picture there, let's go ahead and take a look at that. And that is... Uh, the Miss Bardall. Oh, the a Seattle favorite. Right, the epitome of the all-conquering Ted uh, Jones Hall of the, the, the 1960s. See, the, the Miss Bardall was to the 1960s what Hawaii Kai was to the 1950s. Uh huh. This is a, a three-time Gold Cup winner, uh, Miss Bardall, known affectionately as the Green Dragon, was the first boat to average 116 miles per hour in a heat of competition. Excellent. Well, while we're uh, uh, talking about that, we have just a couple minutes left. What was so neat about the bar doll was that bright color of green. And I remember a couple of things that about the bar doll is that the oil, <laughs> that what the driver did a commercial for the uh, Miss Bar doll, and it was on live television. It was in the pit area, and I remember seeing it. It was 1967, I believe it was. It, uh, they dumped the oil in there and then they dumped the other oil bar oil in there and guess what an experiment I saw them do it it worked but then when they did it on live television ladies and gentlemen <laughs> the other product worked as good as the other one so they just went right back to thing. you know this hydroplane racing ladies and gentlemen is is a family sporting event and it's something that's really really neat and you know Fred it's really exciting and so like I said ladies and gentlemen I'm gonna have Fred Farley back and uh, I'm going to uh, uh, sit down with them, and, and we're going. I'm going to produce a program about the history of hydroplanes. And uh, Fred, you are very excellent, and thank you very much for bringing in those uh, pictures with us today. And um, boy, I, I tell you, there's nothing quite like hydroplane fever. And Fred, thank you very much for coming in today. I I'll wish we had a, had more time, and, and in the near future, I, I think I'll have you back. But like I said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm going to produce a program, uh, and. Uh, about the hydroplane history, history of hydroplanes, and and you were when were you officially recognized as a hydroplane historian? In 1973. This is, this is my 25th season. 25th season, and you do this on your own time, or you get paid to do this? I'm retired from a school teaching, and this is uh, my full-time hobby. Wow! See, ladies and gentlemen, you see here at Strum and Time Live, we like to feature a wide variety of music. Mm -hmm. Well, you see. As we go out of here, we're going to take a look at some more of these pictures and, and reminisce some more. And uh, Fred, thank you again very much for coming today on sure. Strumman Time Live. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Commander Kurt. We'll be back again live next week. And uh, again, Fred Farley, thanks for coming in. Is there any last thing, you, anything? By the way, what's your girlfriend's name? Carol. Yeah. Carol. Hi, Hello, Carol. Carol. How are you doing there? Good to see you and glad you're watching. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to go out of here tonight uh, taking some look, another look at some of these hard to plane pictures. If you're a musician, please call that number. And Mike Ranstrom and Bill D. will be taking us out of here with another number as we take a look at some of these hydroplanes. And thanks again, Fred, for coming in. It was very enjoyable. I wish we had more time, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. Have a positive week, and we'll see you next week on Strum and Time Live. Thanks, Fred. Oh, I love hydroplanes. Get out and see a hydroplane race sometime. Good night.